you guys will be facing off against each other, C9 versus NRG, going up in the next week. So I know you just ca came out of a slobber knocker <laughs> of a g series already. Um, but that, what's something you're looking forward to? Playing with Jojo, I think. Uh, <laughs> as long as we can mid, there's always going to be a good chance of winning. Um, <laughs> hey, if you're on the field, you click mid. <laughs> <laughs>
they're kind of a different team to be honest. Yeah. At least in our scrim. So I don't think TL is unbeatable. I definitely think C9, at least when we scrim them, I think we're a better team. So we versus TL and NRG in the next two weeks. We'll just see. Yeah. You guys haven't played fl against FlyQuest either. So yeah. it's, you still have like the best opponents to go up against. Yeah. Um, what's your guys' assessment of C9 so far? Um, yeah, I mean, C9 has been looking pretty good. I think obviously they have really strong individual players on the team. Um, play top two, top three in every role. So um, I think they've gotten a lot better at playing as a team with the addition of Reaper. Um, always really respected him as a coach. So yeah. I think they're a pretty strong team. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Actually, yeah, you had Reaper as a coach as yourself when you were 100 yeah, yeah. Like, okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> so what did what did Reaper uh, provide when he was on your team? Like, what, what was like his kind of goal and focus? Because he feels like a, a much different coach than others. Well, I think Reaper is someone who like really commands respect, but he doesn't like use that respect to like kind of shit on you if you know what I mean he yeah. kind of like keeps it lighthearted and makes the environment like fun to play um and just more makes it more free for like individuals to just do their own shit basically yeah um and yeah I think he's pretty smart about the game in terms of team fighting and, and stuff like that too yeah so is he lining with it or is he putting the whip to you guys yeah I mean I think he's very he's different than most coaches I worked with mm -hmm. he's like carefree and we can do our own thing we have our freedom but at the same time we can't like completely do dumb shit <laughs> like there's a good balance so it's not like we're like stressed but it's not like we just don't give a fuck mm -hmm. so it's a good balance and yeah. I mean yeah. I think he's smart about the game too today you guys were playing the game <laughs> and he was like not even watching you was like <laughs> something on his not and there, there was a camera on him right you guys like one uh -huh. the team fight with blabber good one shot but they over chased and yeah. they all died it yeah. was like then I'm on his <laughs> looks at the screen and go back to me. <laughs> a lot of times he doesn't even like, yeah, something yeah, going yeah, on. Just he, like, look he like just yeah. I mean, a lot of times he doesn't care, which is kind of funny. I mean, obviously when the games are important or like in scrims, if it's like a fiesta, he'll just like, I mean, if we should improve and we're in sync, he'll like get mad at us and say like, why are we doing this and stuff? But yeah. he knows when to be serious and when to joke. So that's a good thing to have too. Okay. Definitely helped our environment a lot. Yeah. And you said when you guys face Team Liquid and they're not swapping, like, it's not that difficult? I mean, they're still good. Yeah. And when they swap, they're good, too. But I think when they don't swap, they're much easier to verse, I feel like. Okay. I feel like Impact and Core probably just know a lot about swapping and how to just swap well, better than other teams. So mm -hmm. that's why I feel like they're a better team. But I think if swap meta is gone, I don't think they're the best team, for sure. I remember, because in the waiting room, actually, we were, talk we were doing hot takes. And the idea was, like... At least Azale, but it was discussed. Is like Team Liquid may be the best team in the LCS like of all time. That's the th topic that came out. Um, so like first of all, a do you guys believe that? At least because you guys have been around for quite some time to face many other teams. Mm -hmm. um, there has been a pretty crazy growth that they had since last uh, split or last year, honestly. Um, like wh how do you guys feel going up against them? I um, mean, I think. It's really good TL meta right now, too. Or yeah. at least, like, it's, like, low-key the perfect meta for them. Maybe jungle meta is harder now since it's more farming, and I don't think Umpty's really a carry jungler in my eyes. Or mm -hmm. he likes playing a lot of AD champs more. Yeah. Was, that's how I feel. And, like, I feel like it's really good champ pool for Impact and for Core. But I wouldn't... I don't... I, I haven't watched LCS that much back then, so I don't think they're the greatest... I don't know if they are, but I definitely do think they are beatable. Yeah. Um, I haven't versed TL on stage, so I don't know if they're much better on stage, but at least in scrims. They're like a really good scrim opponent to have, but I don't think like they're better than us or we can't beat them or none of that. Yeah. I wouldn't say they are like by far the best team because I think back in the days when there was like one best team, it yeah. probably had a larger gap to the other teams. And right now I think maybe they're the best, but I don't think the gap is that big that uh, they can just win against everyone on no matter what they do. So I don't know if they're like by far the best team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree. I mean, it depends on if you're talking about like how the skill has scaled uh, over the years too, because I remember like TSM was really dominant um, back in the day, but obviously teams were a lot worse. Yeah. But yeah, I'm kind of with Inspired. I think obviously they're a really solid team, but it doesn't feel like they're like far above the other teams, yeah. the other top teams. So you said you haven't watched too much of LCS like past. Yeah. Because who, who would you guys, if you guys have seen much, Peg as like the best L like LCS team in history, and the ones you played against because you guys, hey, you guys are all champions. So if you guys want to be cocky, <laughs> you mm -hmm. can you can put your name in there. Mm, I mean, I think our EG team with Danny and Jojo, me, Vulcan, and Impact was the best. That's mm -hmm. if I would have to choose. But I also think that the Team Liquid team with Impact 
X me double if yeah. JJ and Jensen. I think that was pretty dominant team. I think they were winning LCS pretty easily. Yeah. From what I remember. Back to back to so back. I think back, yeah. that team was probably the most dominant. But if I would have to choose the best team, I think our team on EG was was the best one. Mm. Okay. Honestly, I'm not sure. I mean, I think EG. I was like a rookie, so I was definitely worse. Mm -hmm. But out of all the teams I've versed, I definitely think TL now might be the hardest team I've versed, yeah. at least in scrims. Um, at least when I played in LCS my whole career, I feel like, yeah, TL is definitely the best, but obviously that was two years ago, and yeah. right now the team should be better yeah. since it's just time, so it, it shouldn't be surprising. But at least for me, I'd probably put EG 2022 or TL C9 right now. Yeah. Okay. I, I know the community would go into it a little bit. I want to talk about, I want to talk to you, actually, I want to talk to you a little bit. Just because you guys, FlyQuest, undefeated since the first series you guys had versus Team Liquid. You guys yeah. are doing pretty damn well. Um, how has it been kind of ramping up as a team? And also just like, it feels like some of your games have just been dominant. Before the break, you guys had a really dominant game versus Dignitas, even though it was pretty hyped up. Yeah. Um, how's it felt for you overall? And the Dignitas game was pretty easy. And this week against Immortals, we were struggling a little bit. I think uh, our comps were a little bit more difficult to execute. So I uh, wouldn't really have like a clear win condition. We kind of had to play a bit slow and poke opponents on the on the mid-game fights and like a third and fourth break. But overall, like ramping up as a team, I mean, I don't know. I think we have been pretty good from the beginning. I think right now we are just getting used to playing with Quad and Quad is... Uh, like getting more comfortable playing with us because I think at the beginning it was a bit hard for him to uh, get used to so much talking in the game and like he didn't he doesn't understand English like completely so sometimes he had like uh, misunderstandings or like after the game uh, he he told us that he didn't know what to do in certain moment because he just doesn't understand what everyone wanted to do yeah so I think uh, he's just getting more comfortable in the game and uh, that's why we are just playing better than we were at the beginning. Okay, I see that. And it must help a lot that you guys had the break to be able to ramp up and work on that, I right? I think just playing games together. like every, you guys went to EWC, yeah, too. Yeah, we just played scrims, we played more offshore games, and the more games you play, the easier it gets, I think. Mm. Yeah. What's your guys' thoughts on FlyQuest? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think FlyQuest is obviously a pretty strong team. Yeah. I think... Um, they play pretty well, actually, in bot lane when they have ranged supports. I think they're probably the best uh, double ranged or ranged support bot lane in the league. Really? Um, I think so. Damn. I think so, at least my personal opinion. Yeah, I think, um, that's true. They've definitely got a lot better at lane, and yeah, Inspire's a really good jungle. Uh, I think just their players, are, their players are just really solid, and they like to play pretty aggressively. So I think they're yeah, a pretty good team. Okay, I mean, you said really, you, already, you probably had some uh, team in mind, or at least... Who would you say has been really good with range at bot lane? I mean, I thought TL's pretty good with... I don't know about range support, actually. Or just bot lane in Just general. in lane. Mm -hmm. I mean, C9 lane, but I think Buzio is like... He really loves his range supports matchup, so it kind of makes sense. But I was thinking C9, uh, TL, but... I don't know. I mean, even my balling did say recently that FlyQuest balling has gone much better in laning, too, so... Mm -hmm. I feel like they sometimes play way too crazy though, like they don't ward and they're just playing psycho. At least when I watch EWC, <laughs> there's like a lot of ganks that like they had wards and they just don't ward and they just die. Um, so maybe they like abuse or they play too aggro. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my thoughts on them. But I think if they don't go punished or they ward, they're pretty good. Or yeah. they ward. <laughs> 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 Working on this. <laughs> Actually, that's probably been the craziest level up I've seen on your team. It's not just the fact that, yeah, the the fact that you're working with Quad and getting that together, but your bot lane has been, I think since MSI, getting much stronger. Um, How has it been? Because I remember the first split, there's been at least uh, criticism from the community about like them not being consistent, what's like consistent as a bot lane and maybe being the weak point. But that hasn't felt that to be the case, at least for me. Yeah. I mean, I think before... Uh when Mass and Busy were playing, they didn't really have like a goal in mind what they want to do with their matchup or they ch their champions. So they didn't really play on the waves. They were just like playing their lane, hoping they get good trades mm -hmm. and like play off of that. While right now we are kind of telling them what is more like a reliable way of winning the lane, like when you should be basing and when you should be setting up plays for your team, when your support can roam and try to get vision for the for the map or when he should actually go bot first and like make sure that his AD carry is able to push wave first. So 
I think they just have better planning now, and that's why the game seems easier for them to play. Mm -hmm. And you talk about your break. I guess a lot being said about the break you guys had in EWC. But for you guys, I always wonder about teams that are already at the top, like doing quite well already, and the worry about other teams behind you, like catching up. But how did you guys spend a lot of your break, at least for you individually? Because my fear is you go through the break, but you don't have really something to play for at the end of the week. So is that like the motivation issues or it could be a little bit too lax? But how was it in your guys' uh, team? I think during the break, we actually played pretty well mm -hmm. in scrims. I mean, Flat Coast Tail was gone. And I don't think we scrimmed energy that much, right? We scrimmed like once, twice. Yeah, yeah. we didn't really scrim. And the other teams were like, I mean, we should beat them. Yeah. So it's not like we were struggling, but we only scrimmed five days a week. We had two off days. And we kept scrimming. Obviously, we knew that TL Fly were in EWC, and we just kept scrimming and trying to improve on our own. Mm -hmm. um, we still had some things to improve on, so even if we were scrimming worse teams, we still tried improving on it, right? So yeah. I think that break went pretty well. I just wish we played sooner because in LCK, I mean, I don't know about TL Fly because you guys were probably tired, but LCK, LPL were like playing right after. Yeah. But we still have to wait another week, and that's when I got kind of like, like it was like, can I just start already? Because it's yeah. been like two weeks already, so... But I think even the past couple of days before this, the scrims have been going good too. I think we all just have a goal in mind. And like, even if the games are easy, try to close it out without making, without like trying to limit tests or making too many dumb mistakes. So mm -hmm. that's what we focused on. Yeah. What was the turnaround like for you? Because he already mentioned it. You guys went to the EWC, came back, I guess had a week. But it's always kind of interesting to see teams. There was always a conversation about burnout, about going to an international event, coming right back. But now you guys have to do it again. So what did that feel like for you guys, especially on a new patch? Mm, I mean, the patch didn't really change much. So first of all, that didn't really matter that yeah. much. And uh, I think the worst part was just jet lag from flying that far. Uh, so I think Masu had uh, troubles adjusting after he came back for like two or three days. He was not able to play. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it's good that we didn't have to start instantly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it was like too big of a deal, like the the whole burnout or something like that. I think uh, it's a bit too early in the season to feel it. I think maybe going into playoffs we will feel a bit more burned out because that could happen to obviously any team. But um, so far everything is, is looking uh, looking good. Okay, all in all, did, did it feel like it was worth it to be able to travel out there? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think mm -hmm. playing against uh, like the best teams in the world uh, in offshore game, like playing against G2 there, we got to scream Genji and BLG. So you could see how those teams are playing. So yeah. I think it was a pretty good experience. Okay. Let's take a step back a little bit and talk about some of the other teams because we talked about the top teams a little bit. But <laughs> 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 looking at you mostly because like from 100 Thieves, IMT, Dig, they're all tied 1-3 and it feels like the games, I would have imagined that a best of three would have like differentiated a little bit, but it hasn't. Um, who would you guys think, like how would you guys rank them overall? I'll start with you because now you guys are creating separation. Yeah. Well, if I'm being honest, I think there's a clear top three with yeah. C9 and Flytail. And then from there, the pisses were all pretty bad. <laughs> and I think it's just up to whichever team out of us like finds that kind of breakthrough and um, starts playing well together as a team. Because, I mean, because there's only eight teams, I think every team has like pretty decent players. It's yeah. just about when it all clicks together and you actually feel like you're playing well as a team. And yeah. I don't think we're really there yet. <laughs> and I don't think any of those other teams are. Whereas the top teams, I feel like individually they have really strong players and yeah. you can kind of feel that they have an identity and a kind of direction they want to move into as a team yeah and i think that's just something that the the lower tier teams are, are lacking right now yeah let's have you rank them and i'll put your name into the list or at least uh, nrg so like from the the four teams of 100 thieves imt dignitas energy like where are you placing each team well, we took out IMT. I think, I, I think energy is first out of those four yeah, teams. Including cool. Dignitas? I think, Thank you, guys. I think, <laughs> I think energy has the clutch factor. Okay. That, that's that's True. what they have out of all the teams. Because the other teams, I feel like, even when they're like slightly winning or like slightly losing, they, they will not really do something like yeah. creative. While energy, I feel like... Uh, doesn't matter if winning or losing, like they might do something. Yeah. Something that you don't expect. <laughs> so there is that clutch factor that someone can actually make a play that uh, swings the game. I think that's like the biggest advantage uh, com comparing them to other uh, bottom teams. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like what Vic said, I think there's a clear top three, but I think there's also middle pack and a lower pack. Like, yeah. I think energy is definitely in the middle pack. Yeah. And then maybe dig. Yeah. And then I feel like everyone else is kind of in the bottom pack. Like, I feel like if someone's going to 
break that top three, it's either Dig or NRG. Yeah. If you had to choose a team. So I think there's still a gap in the after top three. But I think after Dig and NRG, it's like, at that time, it's like the teams are basically the it's same. It's 100 teams, Immortals and Shopify. Right? Yeah, I mean, I can't really see a difference in those teams. But NRG, Dig, I can see a difference. At least Dig on stage. Yeah. And NRG on stage. <laughs> 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 clean to it, clean to it. <laughs> That's actually crazy to me. Uh, specifically, two teams, the Dig one and the 100 Thieves one. Because at least 100 Thieves last split had a crazy split. They were uh, just lucky. Yeah? yeah? I mean, of course. I, wanted, okay, I would safe. say they were overperforming. Yeah. The sniper yeah. got like a solo kill every game or like a 2v1 double kill or some random stuff. And Quid was just playing really well. Um, I think River and Quid are a good duel. Even right now, they're still good. Yeah, but I don't. Because he was an MVP that split too. Quid yeah. specifically, yeah. I don't think they have the firepower to just win games though against the top teams, or mm -hmm. they just don't have much to do to win those games. I feel like. Yeah. If they're against other bad teams, maybe they can just win lane, and then something good maybe happens. I mean, just something random will happen. But I feel like if it's Hundred Thieves versus Energy Dig or the other top three teams, I have to give the chances to all those teams because I feel like. Dig and Energy tried to do something. Yeah, I feel like Dig kind of has an identity on stage too, um, but I can't see that in scrims. But on stage, <laughs> Dig has an identity. I think Energy does too. So yeah, is it for? Uh, let's go to Dig then, because Dig's a weird, probably the weirdest one. Because yes, you, you stomp them uh, before the break. They go through the break. They come back. Their first game, if I remember correctly, was the most troll game that they had. Yeah, and then they pull it to three. So if you're just like. Let's say you're a European fan, Korean fan, anything. You just look at the the stats. Like yeah. they took um, Cloud9 and FlyQuest three games. They didn't actually. It was uh, Team Liquid. Yeah, yeah. yeah they took yeah. Team Liquid and Cloud9 <laughs> three games, <laughs> and generally have kind of done well outside of that. Outside of that. So, what is the assessment on Dignitas as a team? Because like they're trolling scrims, but some of their games have been looking really good. I mean, I think, at least versus us, it was, like, our first game. Yeah. And I think the first game, we were all maybe not nervous, but just kind of, like, rusty. Mm -hmm. So I can't really say if they played good. I feel like, at least when we first dig, they weren't good. It was just us kind of playing bad. Yeah. They weren't taking over the game. They were just there. And if we did something really dumb, they would punish. But other than that, if it was, like, a stable game, I feel like they don't really try anything. But I feel like the individual players are still better than the bottom tier players or teams. Yeah. So that's how I felt. I mean, I feel like they all have decent players, but there's no one like kind of doing anything, I feel like, at least when I play versus Dig. How about you? How Because it feels like they play through bot lane, through Zven and Isle mostly. Um, I, don't know, I don't really feel like mm -hmm. they play that hard through bot lane. I just think that they have a lot of experience on the team and they have smart players. So yeah. I think it kind of feels like sometimes their hands kind of fail them, but mm -hmm. they have a lot of experience. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, like they have Zven, Jensen, these players know how to win games it's just um i feel like the competition maybe nowadays the players are just better overall so mm -hmm. um yeah i mean it's really easy to play the game when you have a lead and it's not as easy when you're behind so mm -hmm. so i guess that conversation about like top teams bond teams is a clear three top teams whether the clear the top three teams do much better than the other teams in particular like what do you say is because i remember i ha had an interview with impact and he said over grouping so a lot of times it's more about his i guess opinion at the time was just more macro based mid game mm -hmm. what do you guys think a lot of teams need to do to improve um i mean i think first of all tl c9 fly i think the laners are good yeah like i think if we verse the bottom teams i think we can just win the games just from lane alone or not win the game but we'll just have a lead no matter what yeah and then it's just much easier to play when you're ahead um and i just think we're on we just understand the map better than other teams i yeah. feel like i feel like we're more connected or we're more on the same page. And I feel like sometimes the other teams are not dizzy, but... I mean, yeah, they're kind of dizzy. <laughs> yeah, but I love it. Yeah, okay. yeah, And I feel like we're just much more precise on what we want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know if... I feel like the bottom teams don't really have that precision or they have a plan or what they want to do. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah. Same with you guys? Yeah, I think they just don't yeah. don't use the champions to their full potential and overgrouping is a good point, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, it's very often when you play against the bottom teams, they always try to do something as five. It's never really uh, like they're fighting on one side and someone else is pushing the other side, pressuring you. So I think overgrouping is for sure a thing, especially like when you play against Immortals. It just feel like if they want to make a play, they will be there as five no matter what. Yeah. Earlier, guys, you guys talked about just like some of the top teams just clicking and how it's difficult for some of the other teams as well. You guys have been a part of organizations. I don't know about too much about you uh, in this case, but like, 
How does it feel like individually for yourself, the difference between knowing when a team does click and does are just on the same page and when that's not happening? Um, kind of talk to me through that experience because at least for you, you've been through like rocky roads a lot of the times. You've been on championship teams and you've been on teams that kind of, even on the same org, teams that struggle a little bit to find that conversation. And especially with NRG, you guys had that, you guys butt heads a lot in your winning splits and not winning splits. What makes that difficult to click? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's just kind of a feeling thing uh, when your team is playing well together as a team. There's not too much that needs to be said. Mm -hmm. I think everyone just kind of is on the same page on what needs to happen next. And I think for teams that aren't really on the same page, there's a lot of discussion in the game and discussion can lead to confusion. Confusion can lead to inting. Like, it's just, um, yeah, I think it's just really noticeable. I can't really tell you the exact yeah. differences, but you just kind of feel it as a player and as a team. Um, I'm sure my teammates feel it too, that we're not at that level yet where we are really just connected as a team and know what everyone wants to do at, at every point in the game. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it's a work in progress. How about you guys? Mm -hmm. Because I guess for you last split, there was a little bit of that. But have you guys had that feeling in general? I feel like if uh, players are good individually, then the team will usually be good. Mm -hmm. Unless they have like no leader and no one who well, we like make decisions in the game, but uh, I think you don't actually need that person if everyone just plays like for themselves and you like if your coach knows how to draft and then you pick the champs and you know how you wanna execute your draft. Like your jungle knows that he needs to play around bot. Your bot knows that they need to reset on the like good timers to pressure and like get the Drake early. Your top laner needs knows he's playing weak side and yeah. he's not gonna over trade and just plays the draft well. I feel like then you are just winning. And I don't know, I always try to like make sure that all of my teammates know the big picture in the game yeah. before the game starts. So I, no one has to like keep repeating what's the plan. Like you just look at the big picture and you try to know what your job is in the game. So it's more of a knowledge gap. Yeah, I think that, so. Yeah. yeah. You guys have that experience at all? I was yeah. probably look to you because I guess you came into the league uh, on Evil Geniuses and there was that knowledge gap I'm, I'm imagining. Um, and you guys had to build that together. How is that process? Yeah, I mean, it's just, if there's good players and veterans, it's like there's a clear, at least win con or like idea for me when I was a rookie of what I want to do or what the team wants to do. And then I kind of knew how to play the game with that and like what sh I should do in the game. But I feel like with the other teams, maybe they don't, I feel like they play the same even with different comps or different win cons. And I feel like they yeah. don't adapt to how their comp is supposed to play out or how the players are supposed to play out. Yeah, They don't punish you if you're making mistakes either. Like, I think we kind of had that problem last split. Mm -hmm. Not in the same level as the bottom teams, but I feel like we just didn't know when to fight or we didn't even know when to get enemy sums. Or even when enemy had no sums, we had sums advantage. I don't even think we thought about fighting or taking any good fights or forcing yeah. fights. So I think we definitely improved a lot on that too. And I think that's a big problem the lower teams have. I think with good players or like a leader, it's much easier to make that decision or if someone is calling it, then it's easier for the whole team to know. But if everyone has good players, they shouldn't like know themselves, right? So yeah. maybe on the bottom team, you need like someone that will say what to do or how to play with the comp or the win con and that will make it easier for them. Yeah. yeah. Actually, kind of interesting because like at least on that team, that team was built as, people call it, I called it a super team. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people that have a lot of experience and like, I guess, are near the top, if not at the top of their individual play, at least in the prior season. So how does that happen? Unless if it's just like a overall disagreement that you guys had with each other. I think we just weren't on the same page. Everyone just played individually. Yeah. Um, we weren't trying to play individually, but I think everyone was just on different pages and we were just, I wouldn't say scared to take fights, but we wouldn't know how to take good fights. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't think about how to what the enemy team was going to do. Yeah. I feel like now we're much better at knowing how the enemy team wants to play or what they're going to do, and we can predict that and kind of play along that. And I think our macro and team fighting, I think our team fighting got better too. Yeah. Yeah. I, honestly, I started playing ARAMs, like spamming ARAMs. And after I started spamming ARAMs, I feel like I'm actually thinking much better in team fights too. So I feel like that helped me a lot too. ARAMs do that? Yeah, ARAMs actually <laughs> do that. Um, but yeah, I think we improved everything, but we just know how to fight better too, and we know how to pressure the enemy team much better. And I feel like other teams can feel that. Last play, it was like, if we win lane, then we can win the game. If we don't win lane, then it's like 30, 40 minute game. And then, I don't know, just group for team fights, for objectives, and then hopefully we win. That's why I felt last play. I guess the last thing, I would imagine that kind of 
I would have imagined that this split, that's what you guys would have felt because you guys brought in Thanatos. Mm -hmm. Pretty green, came in from LCKCL. And also, there's going to be a language barrier. How difficult was that? Honestly, his English was really good. I'm surprised because he said he was only taking English classes for like two weeks before I even met him. Yeah. But he could understand what I'm saying and have a conversation with me. So I was impressed. And even now, it's kind of like I'm speaking to an American. Like, unless I'm talking like slang or he doesn't understand some of that. But if I'm talking just a normal conversation, he'll understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I don't feel like he's an import. His link, like his English had gotten way better. Um, I think when he first came in, he was a bit individually because he didn't play pro play for like a year or something. So he was making a lot of like solo queue habits or something. But I think now he definitely fixed that. And he's winning lane basically every game. Mm -hmm. So it's like pretty easy to play. Yeah. Because it's similar. I mean, Quad has competitive history. But yeah. I heard that his English is really good. Just like you talked about it a little bit. But when you were introduced and you were talking to Quad more and you had to work with him a little bit more. Yeah. Um, was that easy? Obviously, the first few weeks, I'm sure, was difficult. But how was the, that process? And I think mid laner has to talk a bit more than a top laner in the game. So it's obviously harder to um, get used to playing with, uh, like for a mid laner to get used to playing with us because like support is going to ask him something. I might ask him something or we want him to do something in the game. Yeah. While top laner is just on an island and usually you just connect to the first grabs and then on the second when someone tells you to swap, you are just like recalling and going bot. And other than that, you don't really talk much with your team. So I think Millionaire just needs to understand a bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think, I mean, Quad is taking English lessons every week and his English is also pretty good. So I think the the language barrier can't be our excuse anymore if uh, something happens to us. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically it, I guess. Let's talk about the meta a little bit because... LCS, we're on the new patch first, 14.14. .14. I expected it to be hitting a lot of the meta, um, but I didn't really feel mu like much has changed, at least for the mid lane and jungle pool, which I think was something that I expected a lot of. Like, a lot of AP junglers got nerfed. Uh, the two big AD mids that we've been seeing in literally every region, especially once we got out of the break, uh, are still being played a little bit, like Corky and uh, Tristana. Yeah. How is Tristana still getting played? Honestly, I'm specifically. I don't even feel the Tristana nerf. Like, yeah. I honestly don't feel it in game. Um, even back then, like, you just rush Kraken and you have the attack speed, you have recurve bow. So, like, your attack speed will be fast anyways, and you have 50 extra mana level one. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you're like versus a mage and you have to queue every wave and contest, and I can feel the difference. But if I'm versus Corky or other AD champions and I'm just pushing, I honestly feel no different. Corky, I can feel the HP nerf level one a tiny bit, but. I still think they're really strong, but I don't think they're the only top two champs you can pick now. Yeah. I think you can still go Talia, Azir, these mages, or even ADCs now in mid lane, and it's still fine. I feel like there's not, you have to go Tristana Corky or you're at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. You can kind of play any mid right now, but I feel like they're still one of the best for sure. Yeah, and when I saw the patch notes, I was like, I saw the Tristana's getting nerfed, Corky's getting nerfed, Brand's getting nerfed. I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, they're gonna change the whole game. And then I see the patch notes. Five damage, three damage, <laughs> 30 HP, 50 mana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, bro. Nice changes. <laughs> Same reaction on your guys' side? Because uh, Battle Fox always will... He'll always have something in the champion pool. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there'll any changes really to Trish Corky. They're still, I think, the premier AD mids. Mm -hmm. And then past that, um, I think <clears throat> the other ADC mids have been starting to kind of pop up, like Lucian and Zeri. Yeah. Um, we saw today both Lucian and Zeri played mids. And then for bot lane, I mean, we just play Ash or Ezreal. I think Ezreal's really overtuned right now. I think his damage is pretty insane. Yeah. And then Ash just sets up for like a lot of different comps, uh, AP jungles, stuff like that. And yeah, I don't know, pretty boring meta, I would say. But you can kind of play anything too in bot lane. Yeah, yeah I saw earlier today, obviously different patch, but Flackwood was playing Aphelios. Aphelios got changed pretty aggressively in this patch. Flackwood was? Uh, Aphelios, yeah. Oh, Flyquist Flyquist was playing no, 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 no. Oh. I said um, Flackhead. Oh, Flackhead. Oh, Flackhead. Yeah, Flackhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From LEC. I don't watch that Dogs Region. So <laughs> <laughs> no. so. Surely you did defend him. <laughs> I mean, that be is the CEO of Aphelios, no? So. <laughs> That's true. There yeah. was no Aphelios uh, today. <laughs> yeah. I should have pulled it out. 50 minute game. That would have been pretty good. <laughs> Honestly, he would have done it. True. You think the change does nothing? Or because of the bot lane meta, seems pretty stale, too. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the change pushes him past our ADs. And also, Ash and Ezreal are just kind of good matchups into him regardless. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think he's playable. Yeah. Not insane, but yeah, maybe I'll play it. Who knows? The one change that I was a little afraid of, but I, I really wanted was the Warmogs change. 
Like, I felt Warmog's being built by junglers, supports. Like, supports wouldn't even get it fully until, like, 26 minutes into the game, 27 minutes until it was, like, really complete. And so the nerf was to kind of, I'm assuming, to push them to not be able to first build it. And then people were still kind of, at least in solo queue, because you can just get double health shard. Like, as a jungler, that, to be fair, you're playing a different meta entirely. You're just playing carry junglers on stage. But what was your reaction to the changes overall? I mean, it's a bit of a nerf to Sejuani, but Sejuani used to buy the Zix item anyway because it's very cheap and it gives you good spike in the early fights. So I guess now you don't have an option. You have to go Zix no matter what. So I don't really feel the nerf for Warmogs. You still buy it as a second item on like Maoka or Sejuani if you want to buy it. Yeah. I think the item was just overtuned on supports because it gives way too much movement speed out of combat. I think that's the part that they should have nerfed. I think the HP region on the item and the build path is strong because obviously you just buy ruby crystals, which feels nice. And then if you get poked, you get to heal up. I think both of these things are pretty balanced. Yeah. But the movement speed out of combat is way too high. I think you get like 10% out of combat plus 5% just from the having the item. Yes. So the support basically is running around with moby boots while yeah. being a tank. So that's like the annoying part. And I think if they would want to nerf Warmax, they should do it in that way rather than increasing the increasing the how high is how high the bar is to, yeah. to activate it. People were actually still moving away from it. Uh, did you have that conversation with uh, Huhi at all? Because now we're seeing a lot more supports go for either Locket or Zeke. It seems like they're tr starting to move away, even it's, even though it's still possible to go rush it. Is that something that... I oh, mean, I always prefer a Locket. And, you, know, <laughs> the you just need to dodge the spells, man. And you don't need the regen, you know? But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think the nerf actually did too much because uh, supports can just take double scaling health with uh, the level. Yeah. And they pretty much... The nerf didn't do anything, basically. Uh, that's how I feel about the item, yeah. All right, for the fans at home, since we are on the new patch and everyone's kind of still playing the same thing, any recommendations for people to play to just climb? Just for the, for the fans at home that are trying to climb as fast as possible? On which mm. role? Uh... I mean, just for your own role, I guess. Each of their own individual role works. I guess for mid lane, like, you can play Tristana. Yeah, I think Brand for jungle is just the easiest champ to play. It's just so OP, it deals so much damage. You just need to watch some YouTube videos to learn the clean, <laughs> and you are good to go. I like that. Tristana, uh, I mean, I don't know if Tilia is easy in Loilo, but I feel like Tilia is pretty strong in solo queue. You can just push and move and help your team. Yeah. And Tristana is more of like a carry champ. If you just want to carry, you can farm and just try team fighting well. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, I feel like every mid champ is kind of playable right now too. I think you should play Lucian mid. Like it's actually strong yeah, now. Yeah, Lucian because mid. You buy Kraken, you have big spike, and then an Essence River, and you are, have permanent blue buff. Oh, and true. it feels nice on Lucian That's to have true. permanent blue buff. That's true. And then you are like so strong. You push waves. You're strong early game. Good scaling. Let's play Lucian. I yeah. think it's good mid. Lucian too. Do you think Lucian make it? Because, like, we haven't seen... I mean, you saw it today, not my game. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, that's Lucian. true. You're right, you're right. I, mean, I can show that example, yeah. Yeah, okay, that works. Because I was, I was expecting we'd see a lot more. Because um, mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of Lucian, at least in LCK. That's what I saw. Yeah. yeah. How about you? What um, As an AD carry? I think Ezreal is uh, pretty much strong at all points of the game. And you can kind of 1v2 if your support's bad as well. Yeah. And then, um, like, Kalista, Ash, this. Just, just pick whatever, bro. Just play. I don't know if they can operate Galista. <laughs> That's fair. I, I like that. Okay, let's go to next topic for me, I guess. It's just a topic about biggest surprises of the split. Because now we're at the halfway point. We can kind of look back and just look back on your kind of expectations of other teams, of other players. What is a big surprise that you guys had of just, honestly, any team? Honestly, I can't think of any surprises. Like You weren't surprised at all? Yeah, me, me too, actually. Me too, actually. Yeah, I, there's not really <laughs> any surprises, surprise. but like, it's kind of how I would imagine it. Okay. Um, I imagine, like, energy dig are, like, okay in the regular season. They ramp up, which mm -hmm. we don't know yet, in playoffs. And they're still top three in the regular season. And then you have the bottom teams where, like, maybe, like, in, like, a thousand universes, one universe, they win the split. But, like, the playoffs didn't happen yet, so I don't know. True. Like, in regular season, it's kind of going how I would imagine it. I imagine dig, well, mostly energy. And maybe dig to ramp up as the season goes, and the top three are still the top three. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, nothing crazy, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, w I would. I guess for me, it probably would have been Dignitas. I know we talked about them a little bit. Um, the fact that I already talked about, you know, that they took you guys to three games and all that. Not you. But, <laughs> but <laughs> in which sense is it surprised that they're doing better oh, or worse than you thought? I thought they'd do a little better. Really? I looked at that lineup. Uh, when when I saw people saying that they would be like a top team, like top one, top two team, they have chance of winning the split. I was like, wow. <laughs> I mean, I think wow. they're like a super team. The yeah. roster looks like a super team. Like, 
in 20, yeah, like maybe like five years ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, obviously, they're still good players and they're veterans, but yeah. I don't expect them to be like top two, top three. Um, I think they're a decent team. They can definitely maybe take a game or two, which they have, off the top three teams, but yeah. I don't think they'll ever be that top contender, mm -hmm. if that's what you're thinking. Yeah. Okay. So, no big surprise on that one. Mm -hmm. Any narrative that you guys have been hearing or the community interaction? Because, like, I was thinking biggest frauds, just teams that you've been hearing about. They're like, they're not that good. I guess we've already talked about Dignitas, and that's the sense. But any other teams that you guys think about or, like, a player? I'm looking at you. Mm, not off the top of my head, honestly. I think the standings um, are pretty reflective of behind-the-scenes scrims and stuff as well. Um, they were pretty shit in scrims. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think nothing off the top of my head, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me neither. Okay. I can't think of anything either. I That's mean, fair. I can think of at least someone in flag quest. I feel like Bupa has been underperforming this split. He's been, like, dying so much and just not playing as good as he did last split. That's mm -hmm. how I feel. Um, last split, I thought he was playing much better than he is this split. So I feel like that's definitely a weak factor or, like, a weakness in flag quest I can see right now. Yeah. I'm actually surprised Quad has actually improved a lot from when I first scrimmed him, and I think he's pretty good. So I feel like... Bipo has been underperforming to his expectations. But other than that, I mean, everyone has been kind of expecting how I expect them to play. Let's talk about the next matchups then, since we're back into the season vibe. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to be facing off against each other, C9 versus NRG, going up in ne next week. So I know you just came out of a slobber knocker <laughs> of a g series already, um, but that, what's something you're looking forward to? Playing with JoJo, I think. Uh, <laughs> as long as we can mid, there's always going to be a good chance of winning. Um, <laughs> hey, if you're on the field, you click mid. <laughs> um, no, but it's just exciting to verse um, one of the top teams and kind of see how far we've progressed because um, I think the last time that we played a top three team, it was FlyQuest in week two. And, I mean, the, our games are pretty shit, honestly, like yeah. um, at least from our side. So just want to see how far we've come because I think C9 is also obviously one of the top teams mm -hmm. and it's always fun to verse JoJo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I want to verse Vic too um, and I think NRG play way better on stage so it's going to be exciting to verse them too because I expect them to do much better the longer the season goes and in playoffs I expect them to ramp up too so I want to see where their form is at right now. I mean, I definitely do think we're going to 2 them still <laughs> but it might be like a 50-minute banger like today or a 40-minute banger. I mean, we'll just see. You're going to be going up against Palafox. It's always been a fun matchup um, I guess this split's a little different, mm -hmm. but like, what's your kind of thought process going in that matchup? Huh. <laughs> oh, you're going to flame, aren't you? <laughs> no, 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 I'm going to flame. Okay, I mean, okay. I just like, I think he's, um, he definitely has intentions in the game, mm -hmm. but I feel like besides me and maybe Quad, maybe APA, mm -hmm. I feel like the other mids, I don't really feel that much different. Like when I verse Palafox versus when I verse someone like Mask or Insanity, I don't feel that much of a difference at least this split. Yeah. Uh, like if you take their nameplates off, I can't really tell who I'm versing. But if I verse Quad or APA, I can definitely tell because APA is going to play Ziggs or something or Cassiopeia. <laughs> and Quad, I can feel like his movement and kind of his laning. So yeah, I mean, I don't really have any like comments. Like it's just like... That's know. pretty big praise on Quad. Who would you have in your top three? I mean, I don't think Quad is like good, good. I think yeah. he's decent and he's improving mm -hmm. i expect him to keep improving but i mean he's also playing with inspired and inspired is probably telling him what to do which is why he looks good too i mean but maybe he's like thinking I think on his own just knows a lot actually like really? he he has 100 games in lck plate like, yeah that's true he he has experience that's mm -hmm. true i mean i think he's good but i don't think he's like someone i'm scared of yeah to be honest i think the top mids are like the top three yeah. still the same i think it's me apa and quad mm -hmm. i don't know i feel like versus quad APA, or quid because Quid was damn good last split. Yeah, Quid was pretty good last split, mm -hmm. but this split, to be honest, I think I made Quid good last split. Was, like, what? Because <laughs> like I, he was I, a Highland maker. I mean, I was, no, no, I was his one v one partner, and I like, kept like he kept asking me about the match, so I kept telling him, and then I, <laughs> so then I mean, so this way I have to stop one v one him. Yeah. Um, but I do think Quid is obviously really good. I just think their team is just not playing well right now, and he's not. He's still standing out. He's doing good, but he's not like as one v nine as last split. Okay. Where he would just solo win games. Um, I don't think he really can right now. I think it's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. I think 100 Thieves are just, I don't know what it is, but they're just not good. Yeah. I mean, when I verse them, I feel like they just take bad fights and they just do random stuff on the map. I don't even know what's going on. Yeah. Um, so it's hard for me to say quit. I think it's still the top three teams have the top three mids. Yeah. This is a good segue. You know who you're facing next week? 
Hade du tips? Ja. Your thoughts on them? Because it feels like anytime it's you versus River, people get pretty excited about that. Because there's a lot of splits where yeah. a few splits where it's like two top junglers inspired River. Wow. Pretty like wow. different wow. playstyles. Yeah, I think I have a team up on my side, so it's <laughs> hard, for him, hard for him to do much. Yeah. Um, What's your take on River a little bit? Yeah, I think I think he's solid. He doesn't uh, make many mistakes in the game, and I feel like he knows what his job is. Like if he's playing some drafts where he actually needs to get lead for his team, he will be trying to do some funny ganks. And when he's playing the the AP champs, he usually has a like, a pretty decent pathing to just get uh, get ahead in gold and like be strong in the game. Mm -hmm. So I think he he knows what he wants to do in the game. He's not like one of those players that just freestyles and does whatever feels right. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think he, he seems like he knows what he's doing. We're on the halfway split point, so I've already asked you about your top three. What's your top three junglers? People would be interested in knowing, because it feels like a lot's changed. Um, I mean, Umti plays well with his team, but he doesn't really play meta champs. He's just speaking Sejuani, Maokai, and just giving vision for his team. <laughs> and they're kind of used to play like that right now, but it's working mm -hmm. for them. So, I guess uh, he is in the top three, mm -hmm. and I'm there, of course. And I think the third one, I think, has to be Blabber. I mean, yeah. he's playing very well with the team as well, so... As, as Jojo said, I think the top three has actually top three players probably on every role. What's in the what's the order that you'd have it as? I don't know, honestly. It's, <laughs> it's a just jungle role. Like it actually doesn't matter. If yeah. Like if your team is winning and you're gonna go and help them, you will win the game. So mm -hmm. I think it's not that much skill involved into that. But I think I'm the best. So I'll take it. What what about the AD carry pool? Because I feel you've been through multiple AD carry pools. I feel like the pool changes so regularly. We have a lot of new players coming in. We had B Boy come in. We had um, Meech come in too. So it's just like the landscape has changed. Where do you have as your top three? Well, yeah. I mean, I think ADC is really team dependent. Yeah. I would say that the mm -hmm. top three ADs on the top three teams are all performing pretty well, though. Um, mm -hmm. They're not really making too many mistakes. And uh, yeah, I don't know. ADC, you just need to know how to lane and team fight. Honestly, like there's not too much to the role. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll just go with the top three for now, yeah. Okay. Before we sign off, I feel like this is the second kind of like EG reunion that we have. <laughs> it's like that we have yeah. you alongside these guys. Can you guys like share a story that you guys had together? Like anything. <laughs> the way you're laughing already tells me you have something in mind. I think... Uh I think Cena and Academy ruined our split. <laughs> what? <laughs> How so? How so? I mean, I, it was like... I think it was a day or two before the Golden Guardian series. Yeah. And we were losing scrims to them. And I think the really? team... Uh, I don't know if you remember. One. They were Dom 1. Do you remember that? We, we were calling them Dom 1. You don't remember? No. We were versing Cena and Academy. <laughs> it was like... The, was it a day before our yeah, Golden Guardian before, series? It was a day before. And we're like, okay, it's like Cena and Academy. We just like are going to shit on them and leave. And then we were losing and struggling. And then... I want to say we mental boom, but we were kind of like... What's what's the word? I mean, you don't remember, so that kind of kills well, motivation. I don't, I don't a remember bit. That, that that at all. Then what do you remember? Like, you remember? I, I, just, I just remember. I remember, I remember I everything about that series against Golden Guardians that we lost. Oh like, yeah, Golden Guardians also. Like was, game one, we had like a free win with Maokai comp, and yeah. then we come Dragon after fight. after losing, we lost Dragon Fight that was completely free. We come backstage and <laughs> we get told that we shouldn't play Maokai and AD mid and we should give it to enemies and then they picked Maokai when I was saying no it's broken <laughs> <laughs> they, picked, they picked Maokai with I think Cassante and they managed to kill oh, yeah. Ari level 3 they played, they played Cassante and I didn't know Cassante, like, I was so dizzy Cassante Maokai kill Ari level 3 so we lost in 20 minutes obviously like we can't do anything and That's then true. game three, I said, like, okay, just pick Diego, Lissandra, maybe we can win. And mm. I think we're, like, pretty decent in the game. And yeah. then we somehow lost. Did yeah. you, like, get so... Oh, he picked Cassante again. Yeah. Mate. I mean, it okay. Was, actually, when Cassante came out, I'm telling George, yo, play Cassante mid. For sure, the champ is broken. <laughs> like, That's actually true. It can't told be picked only, only top. Has to be good mid. Like, it's just so overtuned. Yeah. And then Chovy randomly started playing it, but it was already mid through the split. So, like, he didn't start picking it up. He was like, CBA, I am, <laughs> it's too late to start playing it. And then Gori just pulls out Cassante mid in playoffs. Yeah, to be honest, and I was over. dizzy versus Cassante. I was like, wait, the champ is actually... Because I never lane... Because, like, Cassante mid was meta for a while, right? Yeah. But that was... When it first came out, no one was picking it. It was, like, a couple months after when probably Chovy and, like, LCK started picking it. But mm -hmm. by that time, no one was still playing Cassante in LCS. And then Gory picked Cassante in playoffs, and I was kind of confused on, like, what it does or how much damage it does. Yeah. And then I was kind of getting shit on, and I was like, shit. <laughs> and then it was kind of... And also, I think Inspired was also sick that day, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was from, kind of unlucky. the Golden Guardians game, yeah. yeah. I you were mean, sick? I actually knew, never heard of that. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't like sick, sick. I was yeah. just like, I had a little flu. So. Okay. 
Yeah. A little flu. <laughs> I mean, that's not the reason we lost. Yeah, obviously, course, but obviously it sucks to have. Yeah. But like the story was anyways that we were reversing C9 Academy. They shit on us. <laughs> not shit on us, but it was hard. And then we kind of like were like shit. And then who was on that team? Yeah, yeah, I Academy. actually don't remember. I think yeah. it was Tommy, right? Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy yeah. Like yeah. Canyon, eh? yeah, was like, oh, they were like, Showmaker Canyon. Who was their mid laner? I don't remember. No. Diplex or MS? I don't know. At that point, it probably had to be Diplex. Had yeah, to be Diplex, probably yeah. Diplex. And like mm. we were losing. And then I think we like kind of mental boomed. And I think someday bought us chicken after. Was it that day? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, someday say the day with some chicken. Oh, I, like, I, remember, chicken. I remember the chicken. Yeah, I think I it was that part that I remember. Like randomly, we randomly. Seen an academy. Yeah, randomly. <laughs> you blacked it out of your memory. <laughs> I think you just moved it from your memory. You don't yeah, remember. I don't need this. But everyone was like, I, maybe I was mentally at vacation. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I mean, everyone was like, dep not depressed, but like sad. Obviously, we were losing to an academy team. We had a match tomorrow. I uh, somebody just randomly ordered chicken for the whole team. So that was kind of nice. Surely I had to be mentally out then. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're a corner and you're a long <laughs> yeah, I think you were just I'll, I'll on the flight to Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty, like, I'm pretty sure that day did not happen. Yeah. Might have been a different story for sure. Um, but I we think he was still know. locking Cassante and we <laughs> <laughs> No, I think that would have changed the Cassante pick. <laughs> I think we didn't scream Sinan Academy. Maybe something else would have happened, but probably still would have lost. Damn. Any other stories you guys got? Because that one's already funny as hell. Um, big um, stories. Yeah. Uh, my stories are not not ready for the camera. <laughs> 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 we were discussed on the couch. I mean, <laughs> um, I mean, I remember we got boomed by COVID. There's a lot of funny stories, pretty sad story. Yeah, it's but a pretty sad think, story. Yeah. Yeah. During the latter half of the split, I feel like we're kind of ramping up, and then we got boomed by COVID thanks to Jojo. Obviously. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Jojo uh, had to go to get COVID and walk into office and. Just well, GG. Super it was downhill from there. Yeah, the I mean, I remember I took Nyquil before LCS match too. I didn't know it made me tired. Yeah. I never noticed the Nyquils for nighttime. I just thought it was like the brand name. I think it was versus C9. Yeah. And then I was playing at home and I took Nyquil and I couldn't even like open my eyes and I was like, "What's happening? <laughs> Am I that sick?" And I'm like, I realized later I took Nyquil and like it makes you tired. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> oh I don't know. <laughs> but besides that, wait, was it the game that you were playing from home and we played that stage? We played. Yes. Was when, it Yoni versus Trindamir? Yeah, you picked Trindamir oh, yeah. against Yoni and like got solo. Yeah, yeah, I remember could, that one. Yeah. Or, or the other way around. He played I was Yone, He was Trindamir. I mean, he crit like three, four times or something. But I mean, I was still out of it. I couldn't play. Mm -hmm. So that was unlucky. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. on that note, it's already it. I think we hit a good time on that one. Thank you guys for this episode. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> on to the rest of the split. Take it easy, guys.